Hello, and welcome to this first in a set of videos on using maps for family research, and in particular, families with Polish heritage, although the research methods described are general in nature. These videos are intended to be work-along sessions where you will be pausing the video from time to time to perform the actions described in the videos. Or you can just watch the videos all the way through and go back and run them again to do your own family research. Now let's be honest. As we fill out our family trees, we all hope to find a direct link to Mieszko, Jagiewo, or at least Mary Skłodowska. But we also desire to know something about the lives of our ancestors beyond who married whom and what Babja remembers about the old country. These videos show you how to use maps to provide information about the lives of your ancestors, as well as strengthening the inevitable weak links in your family tree. In this set of videos, we will be applying this six-step process for using maps for family research. Note that in these videos, there will be an emphasis on the value of old maps in learning more about your ancestors. In this video, we will also be using four place search engines and one map search engine. The second video in this set introduces additional map search engines. Finally, we will be using sections of the Stemsky Polyvoda family tree to illustrate the use of the six step process and the place and map search engines. But as mentioned, you will want to use your own family tree after you have viewed the video. Okay, let's dive right into the first step of the process, which is identifying the places that we will be looking for. Here are the results of Geneteca searches for the two family lines that meet with the 1906 marriage of Stanisław Stemski and Stanisława Polivora in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The places shown here in red are the places that we will be looking for on various maps. We will start with these four places associated with the Polivora family. Having identified the places that we will be looking for during this video, we can move on to the second step in the process for using maps for family research, where we will be finding the location of these places. Here again are the four places that we will be searching for, along with the place search engines that we will be using to find each place. We will start with a search for Gombin using Google Maps. On Google Maps, enter the name of the place that you are looking for. Note that you do not need to use special characters for this Google Maps search. Now zoom out on the map to get a better feel for where Gambin is located. We see that Gambin is west and a bit north of Warsaw and just south of Płock. We will be using these landmarks for the next section of this video where we will be finding old maps that show Gambin. Now we'll move on to finding Zdwoj, the second place that we are looking for in this video. This time, we will use Wikipedia. Open up Wikipedia and enter the name of the place we are looking for. As with Gambin, you do not need to include special characters in the place name. Before you do your search, be warned that your results may seem a bit confusing at first, but don't become alarmed. Everything will work out in the end. Okay, let's see what Wikipedia found. Here is what Wikipedia found for the place named Zdwoj. Note that Wikipedia did obligingly add special characters to the place name. Now click on the place that Wikipedia did find. Here is the Wikipedia page for Zdwoj. To get a better idea where the place is, click on the coordinates in the upper right corner of the page. You should now be at the Geohack page for Zdwoj. Here, you will use OpenStreetMap to see where this place is located, 
so go ahead and click on the OpenStreetMap icon. Here is Dvorj on OpenStreetMap. Zoom out to better see where this place is located. On the zoomed out OpenStreetMap, we see that Zdvoj is west and a bit north of Warsaw and just south of Płock. Again, record this information for future reference. Zooming in further, note that Zdvoj is just up the road from Gambin, which seems right based on Geneteca searches for the Polyvoda family. Moving on with the search for places, you will now be using Google Earth to find Dobzhikov. Open up Google Earth and enter the name of the place you are looking for. Again, you can skip the special characters in the place name. Once Google Earth has found the place, zoom out to see where Dobzhikov is located. Upon zooming out, you will see that Dobzhikov is located near both Zdvoj and Gambin, two places that we have already associated with the Polyvoda family. You will now use geonames to find Wansk, the last place in our Polyvoda family list of places. Open up geonames. When opened, your screen should look like this, but don't enter any search information yet. We will be using the GeoNames Advanced Search, so take a moment to select Advanced Search. Now enter the values shown here, and then conduct a search. Again, the results of this search may not be immediately clear to you, but we will resolve the issues shortly. Here are the GeoNames search results for Wansk. Note that there are several possible matches in Poland, so which one is the right place? Well, returning to the results of your searches on Gambin, Zdwoj, and Dobzhikov, you discover that all three of these places are in Mazovian Voivodeship. So, this must be the place that we want. Go ahead and select this GeoNames place. Here is the GeoNames information box for the place. Click on the map icon to see the place on a map. Here is Wansk on the GeoNames map. Zoom out on the map to see where it is located. Here is the zoomed out GeoNames map, which shows Wansk to be in the neighborhood of the other three Polyvoda family places that you have found. To summarize the results of our search for Polyvoda family places, all of the places are west of and a bit north of Warsaw and just south of Płock. You will need to know this for the next section of this work along. Now that you have had some hands-on experience finding places, this is a good time to ask the question, so what? The whole purpose for using maps for family research is to reveal things about your ancestors that you might not otherwise know. So let's see how finding places might help you out. Recalling that Polyvodas tended to get married in Gambin, let's see what we can find out about the place they were married. Back on Google Map, zooming in on Gambin shows the rebuilt church of St. Nicholas in the heart of the city making this parish a likely spot for Polyvoda family marriages. A Google search for the parish reveals several sources of information about the parish. Following the link for the parish Wikipedia page reveals all sorts of interesting information about the church and parish. Note that this site was opened with the Edge Internet Browser which has kindly offered to translate the page from Polish to English. Next, using the Google Map directions capability, here are the walking times among the places associated with the Polyvoda family. 
it's probably safe to say that for over half a century, these folks were all within walking distance of each other and that the families probably knew each other well. Returning to the two family lines that were joined in Milwaukee, what can maps tell us about the Stemsky family? Using the place search engines just covered, here are the Stemsky family places, which are in the vicinity of Chekhanov, with a particular concentration in the Wysokovo, Lezhnevogorne, and Zainbok region. It appears that the Stemskys were around Soinsk in the early 1800s, but moved north of Chekhanov in the mid-1800s. And again, the families in the Wysokovo, Lezhnevogorne, and Zainbok region all lived within easy walking distance. On the other hand, it takes three days to walk from Chihanuf to Putsk, so it seems that the Polyvoda and Stemsky families did not know each other before Stanislav and Stanislava were married in Milwaukee. One thing you might be wondering at this point is where these cool maps showing the places you found come from. These maps were done using Google Earth Pro, a free application that can be very useful when using and making maps. Along with the GeoNames search engine, if you end up doing any degree of map-related work, Google Earth Pro is definitely worth learning and using. To finish this section of this work-along session, Note that you started out by using the results of Geneteca searches to generate a list of places to find, but to use Geneteca, you need to know which voivodeship to search. Your place searches for the Polyvoda family revealed that all the places were in Mazovian voivodeship, but you didn't know that until you got some Geneteca hits on the family members. So you didn't know to start your Geneteca search in that voivodeship. The point is that there is always some back and forth between place searches and people searches when using maps for family research. So you just have to start somewhere and stay with the process. Now that we have found the location of several places, we are ready to move on to finding old maps that can tell us more about these places. Here we will start by finding maps from the 1800s that cover the area around Płock that show the Polyvoda family places. There are several good sources for old maps of Poland in particular. The ones shown here are covered in a second video in this set, but here we will be using just the Mapster search engine. Mapster is a great source for finding old maps of Poland and Central Europe. If you are not fluent in Polish, you might want to click the British flag icon to see the Mapster homepage in English, although you won't need to understand Polish for this video. There are a number of ways to find maps on Mapster, but here you will just scroll down the Mapster homepage to bookmark three particularly useful map collections. Here are the three Mapster collections that provide you with access to maps covering the entire region of Poland. The Karte des Deutschen Reiches covers Western Poland. The Karta Królestwa Polskiego covers Northeast Poland. And the Atlas Geologiczny Galicji covers Southeast Poland and Galicia. Here are the web links for these three map collections that you will find by scrolling down the Mapster homepage. Notice the number of maps contained in each collection. You will only need the Karta Królestwa Polskiego collection for this video, but since these are such valuable collections, it is recommended that you take a moment to scroll down the Mapster homepage and click on each link to bookmark all three of these sites. Note that the Karta Królestwa Polskiego collection covers the Płock region where the Palabodas came from and the Chichanov region where the Stemskis came from, so go ahead and open up this collection. Now with the collection opened, click inside the Płock box. 
This will open the Found Maps page for this section of the collection. For Mapster, a red file icon indicates a large file, and the DPI value indicates the resolution of the map. You most likely want a high resolution map, so click on the file icon for the second map listed to see the 1843 map of the Poisk region. It may take some time for the map to appear, so you need to be patient. Eventually the map will appear and should look something like this. We will now skip ahead one step in the process for using maps for family research to see how you can get the map. To get the map, right click on the map to open an options box for the map. Here you can save the map to your computer or you can copy the image link into your browser and then bookmark the page. For the next section of this video, you will need to examine this map in detail, so you should now either bookmark or save this map to your computer. Having saved the old map that you need for this work along session, you are ready to flip back to finding places on the map. Now, finding places on old maps can be a challenge, so one way to ease the task is to first find major landmarks that can help you out. Since the Polyvoda places are near the large city of Płock, and Płock is on the Wisła River, you can use this river in place to find the places of interest. Open up the map of the Płock region that you saved, and then zoom in on the upper left corner. Here you will find the Wisła River, so pan down the river until you find Płock. Once you have found Płock, pan down further to find Dobzhikov. Now, if you have saved this map to your computer, you might want to open the map in a graphics program like Microsoft Paint and mark this place on your map. Once you have found Dobzhikov, it should be relatively easy to find the other places associated with the Polyvoda family. As with the section of this video dealing with finding places, this is a good time to repeat the so what question regarding finding places on old maps. First, a bit of history. Here is a Wikipedia page describing the history of Tatars in Poland, Lithuania, starting as far back as the 14th century. There is some evidence that the Stemski family may have had some kind of a Polish Tatar connection, so what can old maps say about this? Recall that the Stemski homeland was centered around Chichanów, so take a moment to open up Karta Królestwa Polskiego in order to get an old map of this area. With this map collection opened, Click on the Chikhanov Square and then open up the 1843 map of this area. Now zoom in on the lower area of the upper left section of the map to find Chikhanov. Now zoom in even further to show that in 1843 there was, in fact, a Tatar settlement just outside of Chikhanov. So this old map indicates that perhaps there was some connection between the Stemski family and Tatars in Poland. For another example of how old maps can help with family research, here is Ganeteka birth information for Stanisław Stemski, citing the place of his birth as Klady, with Wysokowo as the parish of his birth. Here also is the result of a Google map search for this place, which produces ambiguous results. The Google map search for Klady takes us to a place named Koski. So, was Stanislav born in Klady or Koski, or are these two names for the same place? Wikipedia, Google Earth, and GeoNames provide no help in answering this question, so let's see if old maps can help answer the question. 
Back on the 1843 map of Chikhanov, zoom in on this section of the upper left corner of the map to find the Stemsky homeland. If you look closely, you will see a tiny dot at the intersection of two roads marking a place named Klady. It is between Kostki and Strayevo Maui, and in the vicinity of Wisakovo and Lezhnevo. So this Klady is almost certainly the birthplace of Stanislav Stemsky. Now, the Google Earth map of this region shows a small settlement which is unnamed on this map, but that lies exactly where the old map shows Klady. Zooming in on the Google map and overlaying the old map on the Google map provides more evidence that this is the place Stanislav was born. Zooming in even further and using the Google Earth Street View feature verifies that this is a place named Kladi. Now, even though Google Map, Wikipedia, Google Earth, and GeoNames do not know about Kladi, GeoNames allows users to add places to this database, providing the opportunity to add Stanislav's birthplace to GeoNames. Using this GeoNames feature, Stanislav's birthplace is now recorded in GeoNames. Hopefully this last example illustrates the value of learning how to use Google Earth Pro and GeoNames if you get into serious family mapping efforts. Here again are the web links to help you use these resources. Okay, one last example this time reaching far back in the Stemsky tree to see how old maps can help us learn more about our ancestors. Let's try to find Struzen and then Bianchi Jarni. Struzen is easy to find on Google Earth and on the old map that we used previously to find Stemsky places. Plus the place we found is near Soinsk so this must be the right Struzen. A search for Bianchi Jani on Google Earth takes us way out of Stemsky territory. Geonames takes us to a different Bianchi, and Wikipedia has nothing at all on this place. So it looks like old maps are our last resort. Now, Bianchi Jarni must be somewhere around Struzen and Soinsk on the old map, but nothing pops out. However, the old map identifies the region as Bianchi and shows a place named Jarnov. So this is a likely candidate for Vazhenyets' birthplace of Bianchi Jarni. Let's try to find where Bianchi Jarni a.k.a. Zharanov, is on a modern map. First, let's mark some places on the old map around Zharanov. Here are these places on Google Earth, which tells us that Zharanov must have been around here. While we are at it, let's trace some roads to Zharanov on the old map and trace some modern roads on Google Earth in the area we expect to find Zharanov. Superimposing old and modern maps gives another approximation on the location of Zharanov. Our conclusion is that Vavzhenyets Stemsky's birthplace of Bianchi Zharni is probably the same place as old Zharanov. And if any trace of its birthplace is left today, it is probably one of these two farmsteads. This concludes this video on using maps for family research. 
Hopefully this video will encourage you to use maps to help learn more about the places that your ancestors came from. If you found this video to be helpful, look for part two in this set where we apply additional map search engines to a new set of case studies.